So I am at a Renault dealership in Honiton in Devon. Um, this little car is back with me. Um, the new owners of it um, had it for a little while and it stopped charging. Um, but they brought it to some local garages to take a look at, then brought it to Renault. And uh, Renault spent eight hours trying to understand what's wrong with it. And um, yeah, uh, still do not know. They suspect it's the battery control module. Um, that's, uh, that's stopping it charging. Let's get it back home and see what's going on. So we're back home and got it off the trailer, chucked it down and plugged it into, as I say, I've got this little chap. Um, so it currently says it is putting in 7.4 kilowatts. We've got the solid blue light going on and it's telling me we've got three hours and 50 minutes remaining of charge. I mean, maybe maybe it's gonna time out, right? Maybe it's gonna do something and then time out, but. So I've got the, um, the bit of paper from, from Renault. Investigate not charging from customer's home charger or from work charger. Check connection comes up on dash. Confirmed fault, carry out charge checks. Updated software for EVC, BVB, PEB, High voltage lockout required. All software up to date and correct. Remove charging socket. Remove charging circuit. Remove charging circuit socket and test wiring. All okay. Suspect issue with BCB. Also fart. Also fart. Also fault stored in computer for inverter fan. More investigation required. Customer uplifting car. That's me uplifting it. I'm not the customer. Um, so yeah. Total price of that um, piece of work to work out to basically, from what I can see, to update the software and to have a suspicion that it's a BCB fault, but to have tested positively um, is £470. Okay, so update. We now, it's sort of flashed, done its thing and says battery charging impossible. And we've gone all sort of red and glowy. Okay, inverter fan assembly. Mm. Interesting. So it does keep tripping. It's now tripping the my breakers in the uh, in the garage. Um, but it's charging again at the moment. But we've got basically. Well, in my hand is a stethoscope. I was just listening. Ah, there we go. It's just gone click again, which I think means now it said, no, nope, you've had enough. So I left her overnight uh, with the main fuse pulled uh, for, the, uh, for the traction battery and the 12 volt battery pulled as well. Connected it back up this morning and plugged in the charger. And although it's still making a bit of a racket, um, it is taking some charge again. We've got, um, so far it's been on for not that long, but we've got about a kilowatt uh, gone into it so far. Um, what I'd like to do is try and get it up to a sensible amount of um, traction battery charge so that I don't have to worry about it going completely dead on me before I start mucking around. So I am back with the Zoe's. So uh, I've bought it back. Clearly there's something wrong with the battery charge module. What's happening is when I plug it in, it's actually tripping the electrics inside the house. I'm not quite sure what's going on, but anyway, um, I have managed to charge it up to 100%. You get about two kilowatts to charge before it starts throwing a hissy fit. Um, so I have charged it back up to 100% and all is good. The battery still shows 98%. Good plan. Um, rather than try and mess around changing the battery charger, I'm going to try there was someone posted a comment, oh, it'd be interesting to see a battery swap on one of these things. I thought I'm gonna try a battery swap. What the hell, uh, just for fun. So we're gonna drop the battery out of this car and pop it across, he says, into this car and power this thing up and, well, hopefully power this thing up and see if anything is doing, right? Um, yeah. I thought it might be interesting. Um, there's not much, um, oh, well, I've not really had much of a look to see what's involved, but from what I can gather, um, there's some, there's like three bolts either side and the battery unit should drop down. Now I have got, cunning plan. I have got 
a pallet truck, which I use for various bits and bobs. I used to use it to lift my load of sleaze up actually when I was servicing it. Um, so I'm thinking pallet truck plus a few bits of wood underneath it, lift up against the battery, undo all the bolts, drop the thing down, slide it out. I mean, what could possibly go wrong, right? Um, and then, you know, reverse, lift it up underneath this thing and away we go. So I've put the Zoe up onto these, uh, onto these wheel ramps and I've jacked the back end up and put axle stands under, um, under each, of the, uh, each of the rear corners. So I think I've got enough height. I think I've got enough height. I don't know how high these batteries are, um, but my um, pallet tr truck does drop down quite low. What I'm thinking is, let's give it a go, lower it down. If I've not got enough clearance, I can always get the jacks under the front of this thing and lift it up, get a bit more, a bit more height going on. First job get the pallet truck underneath it, get this thing supported and um, start undoing some stuff, I guess, and see what's down there. What I'm gonna do to start is remove a load of these plastic panels. There's also a, a uh, a plate here it's got the electrical warning so i think this is where all the connectors for the battery are sitting behind here so let's just do a few of these things first and see what's going on charlie cam okay So basically we've got the, the large um, uh, the large main power connector, we've got an earth strap and we've got the, um, uh, the control module sensor. So I think what we'll do is get the, um, get the pallet truck underneath this thing, uh, disconnect the connectors and go from there. So to disconnect the power from the car on these things, what we've got in here, we've got little tray underneath the footwell oops and yeah so all we do pop that up and then pull that out and go into this thing like that so it slides the whole thing. So the blue safety clip comes out and we slide the whole thing up like that. And now, there we go. So they are, you can see there, the chunky, chunky ass connectors. So whip that up out the way. Right, and then finally, we've got a, an earth strap just here. Pump truck's a little low on oil, so it takes a while. Right. Okay. Well, that battery just dropped. So, I think we're good. rear end has got a lovely little bulge going on a couple of a bulge so I'm not going to clear it in its current state so there is our issue we need to go up a fair bit more to clear it to slide this thing out so let's try going up a bit so I'm going to just jack the jack it up on its axle stands jack it up off the axle stands uh, another six inches or so to get clearance
that'll come this way a little bit. Nearly, a little bit more. So, six bolts, a load of M10s for some plastic covers, um, an electrical connector and six bolts. the first time I've attempted that if you knew what you were doing there and what you were jacking up it literally is like a 10 minute job to whip a battery out of one of these things right you know you see the cars on the bricks with the alloy wheels gone then you see the Porsches with the, the can opener to get the lights out I mean Renault Zoe's boys if you want to you want to hoist yourself um, you know 40 kilowatts of or 20 kilowatts of battery power six bolts and you're away down the road so it's not going to fit in your backpack, right? But there we go. I've popped this up. It's a little bit higher, so hoping this will work. Um, so next job, I need to rotate the battery. All right. So yeah, that's what I was talking about. This. Pin. I think I'm I'm kind of down the hill a little bit too much right so yeah we are we're pretty close there and get it close to the locating pins bit of an issue here, I'm a bit close to my door. started and then so hopefully they removed this properly didn't break it that's it and then that one there Get this out of the way so you can just take that little clip out and slide. Put that out of the way. There we go. Okay, a little chap out. There we go. So We've got our water pump doing its little thing. It's not going to be happy because there's no coolant in this thing. So um, no coolant, header tank, no coolant, no nothing. So we won't muck around with it too much. Oops, drop it in the right way around would be useful. Okay, so the car is high voltage hot. So at the moment, it's not seeing the battery. So I've got more than a few errors to say the least. So let's clear everything. Oops. See what we end up with. Oh, 
Now, interestingly, it's just clicked up. It's told me we've now got 71 miles. Interesting, the other car said we had 102 miles. So, so in answer to that question, yes, it moves. So, um, what would probably be worth doing now is to charge your phone battery, which you didn't. Anyway, um, I mugged around with this for a little bit further. I could not clear the errors on it, uh, both motor errors and charge errors. So, give it up as a bad job. However, um, now I know how to remove a battery and put a battery in. Let's do it the other way. Now we know what we're doing and see how quickly we can do it. I'm kind of inspired by the, um, the Renault Fluence, which is one of my other little project cars, um, which was the first sort of hot battery swappable one that technicians used to do. Washing the underside of the car and then switching the battery. Your electric car's battery is switched in an efficient, fully automated manner. The entire process takes less than five minutes from beginning to end. That's quicker than it takes to prepare a cup of coffee.